today let's work on praying what we already know so the 10 prayer points i'm going to give you eight of them will highlight what god has already said about you and what cannot fail what is sure we're going to pray from that point and trust god to work on you and work on your marriage and work on your wife work on your husband so that you can get the result that you want they're directly based on scripture so that you have confidence that this is what god has promised this is what god wants to do and he will do it now it doesn't mean that you believe them immediately you pray them today but i want you to repeat them repeat them until you believe them and they'll become true for you we're not just going to take scriptures and pray them randomly we're going to pray them with a mindset that god will quicken those scriptures in our hearts and they'll become real so the first prayer point number one thank thank you lord for your presence in my life so this is done god has already said don't you know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit and we read that um in day number two now the holy spirit is with you is in you is with you all the time and so you're going to take hold of that truth and you're going to say in the name of jesus i will have joy and peace in my life and home always so that's a prayer of faith right there in the name of jesus i will have joy and peace in my home and in my life always um now i want you to declare that and pray that so when you're talking about prayer of faith it looks like a declaration and and but it's a prayer in the same place in the same way because your faith is not in you your faith is in god so you're saying in the name of jesus because god is in me and i have god's presence with me i would have peace and i would have joy in my home and in my life always maybe that's not the situation right now maybe you you just ran out of a conflict to join this prayer don't worry about it because you are not depending on you you're depending on god on what god has already promised that he is a prince of peace so jesus was saying to the apostles i believe in in john chapter 14 that i leave my peace with you not the same peace as the world gives but the peace that comes from him is different so that peace is the war is the peace that you're trusting god for the joy is the fruit of the holy spirit you're saying i will always in the name of jesus i will always have joy and peace in my home you pray, pray that until you hear god say to you it moves from hope to faith when it changes to faith when you are praying the prayer of faith when people come around you you're going to be confident to say to them you know what it's going to be all right i know it's all right because god has spoken and i'm just declaring god's word i'm joining my voice with the voice of the spirit that's what prayer of faith looks like the second prayer point here in the name of jesus i will love my wife as jesus loves the church and i will do whatever the holy spirit leads me to do to make her more fruitful as a child of god i will love my wife in the name of jesus i will love my wife as jesus loves the church so that's the first portion of that prayer and if you're a woman you're the wife i will love my husband i will respect my husband as the lord designed us to respect um designed me to respect my husband i will do whatever the holy spirit leads me to do i will do whatever the holy spirit leads me to do to make her more fruitful to make him more fruitful as a child of God. You pray that. What are you doing? You're tapping into what God has already said. You're tapping into God's purpose and plans for your life. You're, you're, you're confident that because God wants you to be a fruitful child and God wants your wife, your husband to be fruitful, then it is automatic that when you choose to do so, you will do so. That's the faith there. So the next one, number three, in the name of Jesus, my wife and I will be examples to the believers around us. In the name of Jesus, my wife and I will be examples to the believers around us. Why? Because you're surrendering to Jesus. You already prayed that in uh, day number three. Now you are declaring the results of what you've already prayed. You're also declaring the result of what God has already spoken. That as believers, we become examples to others. All right. 
The prayer number four, in the name of Jesus, my wife and I are one and we will not fall into the temptation of the enemy to div divide us any longer. So you're not praying what you see, you're praying what the word says. You're praying what God plans, what God wants, what God says, right? So you declare it, you say it over and over again on, and until you believe it, that you and your wife are one. So right now you may not feel it. Yeah, and, and if you're the wife, you and your husband are one, you may not feel it because it's cheating on you. It's allowed the devil to hold on to her or she has allowed the devil to hold on to her. He's allowed the devil to destroy um, him with all forms of addictions. And you wonder what kind of a marriage is this? Or there's no addiction. There's just lack of love, lack of respect, lack of, lack of compassion. And you're wondering, how can I be one with this? Stop looking at what you see trust what god says all right when you trust what god says it will change what you see because you're not open to allow god work through you in the process of receiving what god has already done now the next one is not the prayer number five thank you lord for setting me free from the bondage of sin thank you lord for setting me free from the bondage of sin I am free to live righteously and be an example to my wife. I stand in my freedom in the name of Jesus. So I'll break that down little by little. Thank you for setting me free from the bondage of sin. All over scriptures, especially Romans chapter 6, it tells you, you are no longer, I am no longer, which the children of God are no longer bondage, uh, bound to sin. It says sin shall not have dominion over you. That's what the word says, but that may not be your experience. And the prayer of faith then pushes to make God's word your experience through prayer. So you're going to say, I, I am no longer bound, bound to sin. So thank you, Lord, for setting me free from the bondage of sin. I am free to live righteously and to be an example to my wife. The same if you are the wife. I'm free to live righteously and be an example to my husband. Prayer number six. Thank you, Lord, for making my wife and I one. Thank you, Lord, for making my wife and I one. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, no one will be able to separate us. Not me, not my wife, not any wicked person, not any demon. No one will be able to separate my wife and I. So important. You can. You can choose to do that by yourself. But when you stand in God's word, when you stand in the place of faith, you're accepting God's word. You're aligning yourself with God's word and it works and it, it works for you. We're not trying to create the good things. God already did that. We are trying to say, I'm not going to focus on the negative noise of the enemy, but I'm going to open my mouth and align it with what my father says, not with what the noisemaker says. Prayer number six. Uh, no, seven now. Seven now. Thank you, Lord, for making me the head in this team. That's the man. That's the husband praying. Thank you, Lord, for making me the head in this team. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will always be a great head and lover. I will always be a great head. This is faith stuff. This prayer, prayer of faith, not hope. You are, you begin to see yourself the way God made you. Right? Thank you, Lord, for making me the head. And when I say the head, I used to think for years that head means the, the head of the family. No, no, no. That's not what our scripture says there. When we talk about family, it's a different thing entirely. It says the head of the body. The head of, I need to, I need to, the head of the wife. I'm going to have to share that with you because it's so crucial to understanding God's purpose and prayer. Now, if you don't know it, you would miss it. In New Living Translation, verse 22 and verse 23, verse 22 says, For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. So Christ is the head of the church. The church is the body. The head in this scripture, it's talking about the control center. So it talks about the brain. And the reason why I say that is there are other scriptures that talks about the eyes can also to the nose and it's responding, calling the eyes and the nose part of the body, not part of the head. But 
even if we don't do that and we just think about the head and the body the wife is the entire body from the neck down including the hands the feet the nails everything and the man is the head but in my own torrent in, in interpretation i'm not even thinking of the man as the full head i'm thinking the, of the man as the brain the control center and the body as every other thing all right so the eyes the nose the mouth the lips the, the teeth the teeth the the tongue all of that plus every other organ is the body that's the wife and the head is the the brain now none of those are useful without the other you can't have a bodiless head or a headless body so this scripture is not talking about uh superiority it's talking only about leadership the who is taking responsibility for how things go and if it goes wrong who's going to step up and, and so in this case here when you're praying this prayer you're saying if you're the wife you're saying i'm the body of this team so i'm the other part of this team and my husband is the head the train the 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 the, the, the one that receives instruction for the body and and uh that works together with god to achieve the the, the purpose so the husband cannot do with the wife without the wife and the wife cannot do without the husband prayer number eight dear father i receive grace to imitate you in everything i do especially in how i love my wife i imitate you so if, of course i'm taking that from ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 imitate god therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children see it please see every prayer point when you're praying the prayer of faith or any prayer see what you're praying see yourself imitating god the way he loves you number nine in the name of jesus my wife and i will be used to build the church of christ and the gates of hell will not stop us so what are you doing here you are uniting yourself and your wife and your husband if you're the wife and you're saying we are going to work together we're going to be used to draw more people into the kingdom of god you cannot do that unless you're aligned you cannot do that unless you're joyful in the process you cannot do that if unless you're you're, you're dem demonstrating the love of god the kingdom of god to the people around you see it happening when you align with what god says you open up yourself to receive what god says number 10 the last one the last one in the name of jesus I will teach my wife and children everything that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught me. You are declaring that by faith because that's what he says to do in Matthew chapter 28. He says to go out and make disciples. And you're saying, you know what? The first person I'm going to make a disciple is my wife. And of course, you may be the one, the wife who knows the Lord. The same, you're going to make disciples of your husband. I will teach my husband and children everything that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught me i have the grace i receive the grace i receive the wisdom these are prayer of faith because not because of the words but because of our this uh, uh, choice to focus on what the father has spoken you're focusing on what god has said and what god has already done he's already done it i i, I was telling someone the other day that i has great confidence always that when a person chooses to allow love to flow through them they can transform their marriage i'm confident about it always why because i don't see anything that god cannot do there's nothing that god wants to do that he can't and so when i know that a person two people are married according to god's will then i have confidence that if both of them will open up or even one of them will open up and allow god to influence them they can change that marriage. I'm really glad that you stuck with me today. For those of us who have been praying along, I thank God for you. And I look forward to hearing your testimonies. I'm also praying for you. During my quiet times, I pray for everyone who is a subscriber to my channel, who is on my email list. I pray for every one of you. You're precious in God's sight and God has great plans for you. Continue to love like Jesus and make mega impact.